to the other at a flick of a switch. That's quite nice, isn't it? It just makes you want to play Sid Barrett riffs all the time. But, uh, this one I'm going to keep. It's officially now in the guitarist's collection. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we are going to uh, unbag another new guitar, what has arrived. This is very exciting. As you will know, if you've joined us before on the channel, I get very excited when I'm unbagging a new guitar and seeing it for the first time. Uh, today's no different. Oh. This is it. So, this is the Squire Classic Vibe 50s. Esquire, uh, designed and backed by Fender, and this one is uh, is made in Indonesia. I think it's made at the Court factory in Indonesia. This, uh, as I, I I read that somewhere on the internet, but don't hold me to that. Uh, it's just a 2020 model. Um, so pine body. Brief history lesson: the Fender Esquire was the first production guitar that, that Fender made in 1950. Uh, the prototypes were made in like 1949. The prototypes, the bodies were made of pine, apparently. And then in 1950, uh, it, it actually, I think it changed to ash when they went into production. In 1950, the first production guitar from Fender was the Fender Esquire. Now, you may have noticed by now, if you're uh, paying attention, that this has only got one pickup on it. Hence the name is Squire rather than Telecaster. It's only got one pickup. Good heavens. What's that all about? Well, we'll find out, I assure you. We'll go through the switching and stuff. For, it's got a three-way switch, so it'll be interesting to go through how that works with one pickup when we plug it in. Nickel hard, nickel plated hardware anyway. The proper traditional vintage style ashtray bridge which is very cool uh, this has got vintage barrel saddles um, I don't know if that were the very early fender ones the barrel ones or whether they were brass then but this is this is definitely the same as the late 60s early 70s design on on telecasters uh, the next got this great tint uh, uh, they call it a urethane gloss tinted gloss urethane um, it's got this great, yeah, it's a really nice colour. I had a, a Squire once before with with this and I uh, always really liked it and regretted selling it. Um, uh, it was one of those modified vintage Squires that they did a few years ago, which um, it's only really when you get rid of them you think, well, why did I do that? It was, it was crazy. It had a, it was a white Telecaster with a Jazzmaster neck and a Jazzmaster style pickup. It was fabulous and it played really well. But I got rid of it for some stupid reason. I may hold on to this one if I've learnt my lesson. So narrow tall frets, a bone nut, which is very cool. Vintage style tuners. String through body. It's got squire stamped on the um the neck plate there. Medium C, quite a thin medium C, nine and a half inch radius neck. We'll measure the neck in a bit and put that up up on the screen. Um, pine body, as I think I've said. Yeah, nice. Bit of weight to it. We'll we'll weigh it later on as well and put the specs up on the screen. I mean, this is um, this is a three hundred and thirty nine pounds guitar, um, so properly affordable. Classic vibe. Is if it was anything like the the Mustang that we we reviewed on the channel a while back, it's uh, it's going to be great. 
I'm really looking forward to uh, plugging this in to find out. Right. So we're back. Um, got the uh, Fender Blues Deville reissue, 4x10. Sounds like this. <laughs> So notable players of the Fender Esquire included Sid Barra, of course. So the controls, so here you go, so you've got a three position switch, one pickup. So in the, um, the back position let's say, tone controls out of, out of control, out of, act, out of control, tone controls out of control in the back position, nothing happening there at all, volume still works. So if you want to take a, a bit of treble off, you, you can do it by just rolling off the volume. It's obviously a very bright guitar, as you can hear already. So slightly less effect on your fillings. Um, with it rolled off a little bit. Now in the middle position, yeah, tone works. Tone works, volume works. So, got more control with that on fully open. Probably get closer to a, a neck pickup, um, although I think with a single coil, you have to manage your expectations a little bit. But no, nice for chords. Uh. Still real nice bite to And in the forward position, you just get the tone fully off, uh, which is kind of, they call it the dark position, I think. Um, I think this is quite dark without um, a pedal, but I think if you put a pedal on it to, to, to brighten it up, you might find it works a little bit. So it's like that instant woman tone. So that's, um, that's what's needed on that, I think. You can brighten it There you go, yeah. So one extreme to the other, a flick of a switch, that's quite nice, isn't it? So, um, should we play?
so this is a great guitar. It's great fun. It's affordable, uh, cheap even. I'd like to. Yeah, you know, I mean, for what this is, it's great fun. The neck is feels great. I mean, it's quite it's quite shallow. So when you're and it it feels quite wide. I don't know if it's wide or just feels like that because it's shallow. So I think it takes a little bit of adjustment from the guitars we've been playing recently are the um, the Les Paul Juniors and they've got chunky necks. This is it's quite flat, so there's an adjustment to be made in you know in your position. But you you know you get used to different neck profiles very quickly. You just play a guitar for a while and then all of a sudden it's really comfortable. Um, but these are the uh, these are the measurements. So the width at the nut is 1.668. The depth at the first fret is 0.844. The width at the 12th fret is 2.025. And the depth at the 12th fret is 0.861. Here's the profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. And the pickup output measures 7.06 ohms. A look inside the control cavity, we can see we've got full size Jin Sung Korean made parts and some sort of electronic wizardry going on with the switch there, presumably for the dark circuit. Just makes you want to play Sid Barrett riffs all the time. Sorry about that. It's a really great guitar. I mean, I love it. I love it. I love this guitar. I'm just more and more falling in love with affordable guitars and constantly being surprised at how uh, absolutely playable they are straight out of the box. Now, I know Telecasters are known for being really, you know, stable tuning wise. Um, I think, you know, after a nuclear holocaust, the, the only things that survive are cockroaches and Fender Telecasters and the Telecasters are all in tune. I think that's how the saying goes, isn't it? Um, you know, it's not, it might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but you know, this has been great. Um, so what I was saying was I'm constantly surprised about how playable these affordable guitars are straight away. And I know people talk about fret sprout and stuff like that. And I, I think that's, I mean, I can't feel anything on this guitar, and I think that's largely could be down to what what climate you live in, you know, where you live. If it's very dry, you know, for example, we live in the UK, and um, there's plenty of moisture in the air over here, so maybe that's why, you know, I don't have a problem with it, um, um, and why I'm so pale, probably. Anyway. This is really great, it feels great. It's will weigh it. So how, does it, how much does it weigh? Let's have a look. The guitar weighs in at 8.96 pounds. It, it's quite a nice, it's quite a chunky piece. I mean, it's pine, the body's pine, and that is, um, I think, a, a, quite, a, a, quite a dense and heavy wood. So I think that definitely helps to sustain. And, 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 and as you've heard, there's bags of sustain in this. Very toppy. But you can, you know, you can roll that off. And, and don't forget, this amp that I'm using is, is very bitey, it's very trebly, um, and I've chosen that for a reason. A different amp will give it a slightly different, you know, kind of sound, maybe a little, little bit less bitey. Um, yeah, yeah, it's... Um, it's a thing, I mean, it's his own thing. It's not a Telecaster, it's an Esquire. It's his own thing. So, if you've already got Telecaster or Telecasters, as I suspect a lot of you have, you can also go and buy an Esquire and justify it because it's different. It's got a different name on the headstock and it's only got one pickup. And you'll play it differently because you won't be switching to that. You haven't got that. Although it must be said, I believe there's routing under there. So if you didn't want to spoil this guitar and put another pickup in it, you could. Nothing to stop you.
But this, I, I love it because it's got, you know, it looks the part and uh, it feels great. And you could definitely go out and gig with this and um, leave your expensive ones at home and um, not be worried. So um, great, great guitar. Again, I'm loving uh, reviewing these affordable guitars because they're really opening my eyes and you know, leading to the point where I think, well, I'm just gonna sell some of my expensive ones because as nice as they are, you know, sometimes hard to justify having all that money tied up in a guitar, really. You know, when you can get four of these for, a, for an average priced, you know, expensive guitar these days, you could get loads of these things. I, I mean, in fact, I have over the last month or so, I've got quite a nice collection of, of really nice Epiphones and Squires building up and, and I'm, I'm often looking at them longingly and thinking, I wish I had more time to actually play the things. So uh, yeah, if we go off air for a while, that'll be why, eh? Um, so there you go, it's a Squire classic vibe, 50s Esquire. It's not a Telecaster, it's a Squire. So if you haven't got an Esquire, you can go and buy one of these um, because they're great. I'm now, I'll be photographing it in a bit and it won't have any plastic on the pick guard because this is a, it's one I'm gonna keep. It's officially now in the guitarist's collection and I'm very proud to own this and I'm really pleased I bought it and I love it. It's great. And I'm gonna play some more Sid Barrett uh, or something else, I'm not sure yet. Uh, let's find out, eh? <laughs> 